Now, the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, has been at the forefront of promoting regional stability and cooperation in West Africa. One of the key tools in its arsenal is military diplomacy, which has played a crucial role in maintaining peace and security in the region. A recent example of this is the visit of the Chief of Defence Staff to Niger, which underscores the importance of military diplomacy in ECOWAS's efforts to address regional security challenges. Security experts, Group Captain Sadiq Shehu, joins us now to analyze whether military diplomacy can succeed where traditional diplomacy failed in ECOWAS following the recent diplomatic visits by the Chief of Defense Staff to Niger Republic. He will also review the success in the fight against insurgency with the military high command shifting its command base to Sakwato and assess the what has changed with the increased funding and procurement of jet fighters and other military assets. I want to say thank you very much for joining us here on Newsday. Let's get it started. Military diplomacy, how effective is it on the continent, especially the bloc itself, ECOWAS? Well, thank you very much for having me. First, I must say I congratulate uh, the Nigerian Armed Forces uh, and the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, General Christopher Gwabi Musa, for the uh, diplomatic foray he made in the uh, almost intractable standoff between uh, ECOWAS and the countries of Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. And also uh, the standoff we can see, Nigeria been uh, holding the chair of the ECOWAS. Uh, by extension, we can also say there's a standoff between uh, Nigeria and Niger, which are our neighbors with which we share common interest in security, in economy, especially in the fight against terrorism. Now, uh, we have seen uh, a very effective, you know, employment of military diplomacy. Uh, to all observers, uh, you know, because of the impasse as a result of the tough stance that ECOWAS took against the coup that happened uh, in Niger, uh, we could say at this time, it is almost impossible to have a presidential talk between Nigeria and Niger, or even a ministerial level uh, talk. But when we see the arrival of the Chief of Defense Staff of Nigeria, we saw the reception he received. And uh, I think uh, this is a very good example to be studied, to be applauded, to be encouraged, to be built upon of military diplomacy. When we say military diplomacy, it involves the use of military uh, you know, uh, uh, capacity, military resources, military contacts, military relationships to achieve strategic and diplomatic objectives. Sometimes when there is low trust and where you know, uh, uh, traditional diplomacy has failed, sometimes talk between military high commands of different countries can present a breakthrough. But also it depends on context, it depends on situations. Here, the context succeeded because there was an existing you know, uh, uh, military relationship between Niger and Nigeria at the bilateral level. There's also, uh, there's also the, the existence of uh, long years of uh, training together, either it is uh, in the Armed Forces Command and Staff College or in our Defense College there, you know, a lot of Niger officers come there. So whenever these things happen, there is bound to be among Nigerian officers, people within the higher hierarchy of Niger, uh, you know, military with which they can talk. Sometimes when talk is not... Uh, possible between president to president or minister of foreign affairs to minister of foreign affairs, as we have now, a phone call between these uh, military officers of the two countries could uh, save us to break through. So uh, I congratulate Nigeria and congratulate Nigerian armed forces because in the long run, if this uh, you know, uh, schedule is followed probably with Niger, uh, with Mali, Burkina Faso and the other countries that are threatening to leave ECOWAS, we may be able to see military diplomacy working where traditional diplomacy did not work. Well said. Now, uh, many thanks, of course, for explaining military diplomacy for those who might not fully understand it. Now, from what you've said, uh, is the goal to fully embrace military diplomacy or combine it with traditional diplomatic approaches? Yes. Uh, military diplomacy, like I said, it can come in when the, uh, when the uh, traditional approach does not work. But however, they work in tandem. In the ideal situation, military diplomacy can complement, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the traditional diplomacy. That's why you see in most countries in their embassies abroad, 
they have uh, the uh, diplomatic section where you have the diplomats and then you have the defense section plus uh, other security agency section. Each one has its unique, but it is often, I mean, it happens sometimes that the, you know, the normal diplomatic channels do not work. And then uh, one officer talking to another officer that he knows and the officer can talk to the president of his country. Sometimes you find that this kind of back channels work. And, uh, you know, uh, you can do it at different levels. At the levels of the, of the, of the chief of defense staff, like we saw in, uh, in Mali, sometimes it is between defense attaches. Sometimes it is even between personal relationships built, either courses of some officers meeting in certain countries and doing courses together. All officers that have attended courses abroad, you know, they have cosmates with which they have done courses. You may find sometimes the key holder to any decision in a particular country is somebody you have attended a course to. And if your country can identify you as a resource and use you, you may be able to break uh, a jam, uh, I mean, a, a deadlock that has existed for a long while. All right. Um, at the moment, before we move on to other things, would you say that with what has happened in the countries that we witness coup within the ECOWAS block, that military diplomacy would have probably worked better than traditional diplomacy. Thank you very much, Dr. Abati. I actually spoke of context. I said the success depends on context. Here, the context helped us because in the country, in the receiving country, that is Niger, it is the military that are in power, whether we like it or not. So having a military man talking to a military man, uh, there's likely because of esprit de corps, because of uh, this commonality of uniform, there is tendency for the junta leaders in, uh, in, uh, in, in Niger to listen to a fellow military man than to listen to probably even our minister of foreign affairs or even the president if I succeeded. But in any case, the whole idea is to ensure that the strategic and the diplomatic interest of Nigeria and of ECOWAS is achieved. So whatever way, certainly having leaders Having military leaders in that country assisted. Probably if they, it was a civilian regime, they may not listen to a military man. So context is very important. All that is that helped context also is the long, uh, uh, even in fact, if you see the, 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 the video, I want to believe even linguistic things, something some, as common as language could make a difference. The CDA spoke Hausa, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Niger officers, mostly speak Hausa speakers. So even that, you know, could break the ice in a conversation. All so right. context is very important. Fantastic. Now, I'd like to, us to move away from, re to, you know, focus on the region and bring it back home to Nigeria. I'd like to ask you, with the increased funding and procurement of military assets, including fighter jets and tangible changes, have you observed... Um, what are the tangible changes that you've observed when it comes to the military's operational capabilities against terrorist groups? Well, uh, our fight against uh, terrorists and bandits is a war. It is not a battle. What do I mean? It has a series of escapades. Sometimes we see series of successes and then we see reversals. It's a long journey. It's not a, a sprint. It's a marathon. However, if you ask me specifically what I have seen in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, improvement, whenever a particular piece of equipment is requested, it's as a result of uh, experiences in the field where the military understand that it has a gap. But having said that, it is good for Nigerians to understand there is no one single equipment that can answer all the questions. I always liken it to the kitchen of a, a, a well-resourced housewife. You see different set of knives for different purposes. So it is with uh, this, the jets you mentioned, they have the work they will do. The APCs, they have the work to do. The uh, MRAPs, like the one that, uh, that we saw with the bandits, they have their work to do. So it's a continuation. Sometimes militaries do not know what they lack until the battle is joined. Then you find that you have a, I mean, uh, a gap here and you have a gap there, which you continue to experiment and continue. With, in terms of uh, actual uh, uh, you know, uh, improvements, uh, if you talk at the Northeast, we can say most of the areas that have been, this is, I'm taking us back right from uh, President Buhari because it's a continuation. You know, the areas captured by Boko Haram has greatly reduced. We do not see uh, Boko Haram launching deliberate attack on our forces and making them to flee. 
like we used to have in 2013 and 2014. So in those areas, we can say there are improvements. But if you want to talk about bringing peace and security, especially in the Northwest, that will allow people to remain and do their farming and follow their lifestyles and people to travel, unfortunately, it is still an uphill task and we are not there. So, but what I would call is that uh, both the military, the DSS, uh, the intelligence services, the police must continue. At the same time also, the political masters must do their bit. Because it is not only budgeting. What do you budget for? I will continue to say this. Sometimes in, 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 in uh, defense spending, it is not actually the size of the budget. It's what you did with it. And here, the people in the executive branch, the people in the legislative branch, they all have a role to play. Make sure you provide for adequate money. But when you provide adequate money, follow the money to see what is done. Because with due respect, uh, sometimes you will find that uh, while very pressing issues are there, you will find us you know, going into some side shoes. Uh, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, when you see a country that is battling with... Uh, with the bandits, with the remnants of Boko Haram, and then you are finding in the defense budget, you are finding presidential yacht, and so on and so forth, then you wonder how do such a budget pass the scrutiny of the executive branch and the legislative branch. Certainly that is not what we need. That is what I mean. All right, quickly, before we actually wrap it up, um, the military high command shifting its command base to Sakwato. Talk to us. How effective has this been? Well, uh, the command base, including the uh, Minister of State for Defense, if I hear correctly, they want to move to Sokoto. Well, whenever a, a VIP, a high political leader, visits troops in the, in, the, in the battlefront, there are advantages of such uh, visits. It will raise morale. It will show that the leadership is listening. It will show they are keeping their bottle. It will show that they want to go and see what are the conditions, what are the situations that the troops are in. Now, if these are actual advantages that such a visit or going will go. But when we look at our history, this is not the first time of course. that uh, we've been hearing the president since during Buhari move to the battle area. Sometimes well, the order is taken like a physically and the expected. Yes, thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry to have cut in, cut in, but we certainly appreciate your time and insight here on Newsday. We'd like to appreciate you for joining us. Thank you. Group Captain Sadiq Shehu is an analyst and he's just been get, doing justice to that topic right there. <laughs>